we wanted to talk more about the hepatitis C landscape and Gilead sciences. Shocking, right? I you know, have you know heard of these... Gilead before, Todd? <laughs> yeah. Listeners know we talk about this stock a lot. And let's explain for a second why, right? And I, I think that's a good Gil- idea. Gilead Sciences is a massive, it's, the, it's one of the largest biotech companies, if not the largest biotech company, right? They do $30 billion in sales. And they market a, a 2H uh, hepatitis C drugs that, uh, you know, if you combine the sales of those, make it the biggest selling uh, drug in, in, on the planet. You know, it outpaces Abvi's Humira by a couple billion dollars a year in sales. We're talking about, you know, a, a massive story. And, th- and that's why we spend a lot of time talking about it. Yeah, I would say it's like the apple of healthcare. That's a great analogy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Gilead Sciences reported their first quarter earnings results um, and it had a couple surprises. Yeah, this is the first disappointment in a while that I can remember. Right. You know, I think industry watchers were looking for earnings per share of, uh, I want to say it was like, uh, I don't know, 314, something like that. They ended up getting 303. Um, and that's that's not normally what happens. It's usually Gilead Sciences sandbag, quote unquote, the uh, the projections so that they can under promise and over deliver. That didn't happen this time. Yeah, most of the disappointment stemmed from their hepatitis C franchise, in which product sales decreased six percent year over year to four point three billion, which is still an enormous amount. And that was largely driven by a decrease in Harvoni sales, which is one of the hepatitis C drugs within the United States. Yeah, it was all Harvoni. There's there's no no getting around it. It was all United States. So all these sales increased and Harvoni's decrease. And the reason behind that is competition, competition, competition. You know, a couple years ago when when, uh, uh, Gilead Sciences first launched these drugs, it had a monopoly. So it priced these drugs at 84,000 for Savaldi, 94,000 for Harvoni. Um, But since then, you've got Avi launching Vicarapac, you've got Merck launching Zapadia earlier this year. And as a result, there's a price war yeah, I actually, I kind of think that that's almost a secondary force happening right here. It, maybe not a secondary is not the right word, but like a preliminary force. And when I was reading through this earnings call, I kind of broke it down into four major reasons why we saw this decline. And it, of course, this is what management is saying. But so they highlight first expanded access, which triggered lower price points as per prior negotiations. So they had these contracts with their payers basically saying, if you provide the drug to more people, then we'll give it to you cheaper, which, you know, the economics of that makes sense. And that's what we saw is that there was this expanded access and it triggered the negotiated prices to get lowered. Uh, Second item is that they uh, expanded their reach into lower cost segments like the VA. Third, uh, shorter treatment duration. A lot more patients were taking it for eight weeks as opposed to a longer 10 or 12 week cycle. Um, And the fourth thing is foreign exchange, which I kind of like to ignore that because it doesn't really mean much for the business itself. But that did affect HCV revenue by 8% year over year. And so I think those four things, well, three out of the four, are somewhat driven by competition. But they're also not really as menacing and bad as competition would imply. I mean, this is a company that still has really, really strong market share, 90% plus. And they're just seeing broader access to people that are not quite as sick and therefore are, are seeing lower price points. Right. And that's a natural, I guess that's the natural progression of the market, right? We've, you know, at first you have massive warehousing of patients who are the sickest, uh, and then those patients get treated. And once you've worked through those patients, um, uh, then you can start to expand it to, to other people. But, you know, when you're talking about a uh, indication that affects you know, 3 million people here in the United States, 150 million people globally, or uh, some, t- some estimates are higher than that. Um, you know, y- you're willing to cut the price a little bit in order to make sure that everyone who is infected um, can get access to this treatment. And, you know, if you look at what's happened since Savali's approval in 2013, um, I think it's roughly uh, a million people have been treated uh, with hepatitis C drugs. Uh, 800,000 roughly have been treated with Hep- Gilead Sciences uh, version of those drugs. And, you know, obviously you want to get to a situation where 
you're able to treat as many of these people as possible so that you don't see as dramatic a, a drop in revenue as your price is forced down. So, I mean, if if Gilead Sciences was able to get 70,000 or 60,000 for their drug prior to Vicaripac, then they were able to get 50 to 60 after Vicaripac, and now they're getting 40 to 50 now that there are multiple competitors on, on, on foot. You need to offset that uh, by by treating more patients. I think that that's an important thing for investors to remember is that major indication opening up to a larger patient pool. And that doesn't even include the potential for China. Um, you know, one of the things that, that investors should also recognize is that this drug is not available yet in China or Gilead Sciences drugs not available in China yet. And Savaldi could theoretically make it onto the market there as early as 2017. China that has a market tremendous. of 10 to 20 million people that have hepatitis C, that are known to have hepatitis C. Yeah, it's a tremendous. Now, who knows what the pricing will be there? Everybody's going to be lining up and submitting a bid and saying, approve my drug, approve my drug, right? I'll give you the best deal. Um, you know, you talked about the VA. Um, you know, the VA has had some funding issues uh, when it comes to paying for hepatitis C drugs that weighed down a little bit of Gilead Sciences uh, at the end of the year. So there probably was some warehousing that came through in the first quarter now that funding has become available again. Not sure whether or not <clears throat> they'll probably level out throughout the rest of the year. But I think investors should be looking at this and saying, OK, well, yeah, you know, there's a little bit of a, a of of a hiccup here because of these issues, but you're still talking about a sixteen billion dollar per year business for this company, and you're still talking about a company that's generating out four billion dollars in profit per quarter. This is this is far from a company that's that's uh, struggling. This is also a company that has quite a bit of cash on the books, twenty one billion at last count. 